In this very short MATLAB video, I'm going to show you how to derive symbolic finite difference approximations using the symbolic toolbox in MATLAB. The expectation here is that you've watched the lecture so you understand the methodology, the approach we're going to use. If not, some of what we're going to do will not make much sense. So for this simple example, let's calculate our finite difference approximations for the first and second order derivatives and also interpolating the function across three points and we'll evaluate it at the second point. So the first thing we really need to do is declare our symbolic variables. So we use the function sim s. We'll need h for our grid spacing and we need three function values f1, f2, f3. All right, we will run this just to make sure we don't have any errors so far. Okay, and we can type H at the command prompt and it tells us, yep, H equals H. Now the next thing we need to do in our process is build that column vector little x, which is the coordinates in our offset system. Remember, we're offsetting our coordinates to place location zero where we want to evaluate our finite difference. So we'll define our offset points, little x. We have three points, so we need to put three numbers in here, separate it by semicolon so that we get a column vector. If we want to evaluate our finite difference at the center point, that's zero in our offset coordinates. If our grid spacing is h, that makes the first point at minus h and the second point at plus h. Now we don't need to write the plus in MATLAB, but I like doing that because it just visually goes with the minus h over here. Then we need our column vector f, which will have the function value at each of these points. So we have f1, f2, and f3. And we can just hit space and then we can see a, a one to one matching between the, the x and the f. Let's leave the semicolons off and we'll run it and we should see a column vector x and a column vector f. And so we can see our offset coordinates and our function values. The next thing we need to do is build this matrix x. But I want to do this in a way so that if I want to add or subtract more points, I can control that solely through these two lines of code and everything else will handle any matrix size, any number of points. So we won't have to change the rest of the code. So no hard coded numbers. Build matrix X. Well, the first thing we'd like to do, since we don't want to hard code any numbers, is figure out how many points we have. So we'll look at the length of X. And we'll leave the semicolon off. We'll run it. We should get 3 for L. Okay, we have 3. Now we can start to build X. What we want to do is initialize it with all 1's going down that first column. I'll leave the semicolon off, we'll run it. Okay, so we see all ones. Now there's still a problem with X. X right now is just a one-dimensional array of double floating point numbers. If we go ahead and try to add symbolic variables to that, MATLAB will yell at us. So what we need to do is declare that array of ones as symbolic. And so if you run it again, you really won't see much difference. We'll still see the ones there, but now they're symbolic ones. Okay. Now we're ready to insert the rest of the columns in X. So we'll use our column number N. We've already filled in the first column with one, so we'll start at the second column, and we'll go all the way to L, which will be the number of columns in this matrix. So then in X, we want to insert into the nth column. We want to insert our coordinates. However, they're raised to the n minus 1 power. Okay. And so let's display X. 
sure everything's correct. And there is our X matrix. We have ones in the first column. The second column are our offset coordinates. And the third column is the offset coordinates squared. And we did this in a way that if we added more points to X and F, X would still be built correctly. Next step in this is to calculate our polynomial coefficients. So we'll put them in a column vector A, and that's X backward divided F. Again, we'll leave the semicolon off to make sure that we get a column vector that will have symbolic expressions in it. Those symbolic expressions are almost our finite differences, but not quite. Especially for this, this last row. Remember, we have to multiply that by 2. Okay. So now, let's, let's look at the first element in A. This is the the finite difference approximation, if you will, or this leads to the finite difference approximation for interpolating the function at that zero point. And in this case, it's the second of our three points. So uh, report equation for interpolating F. So we'll call it F0, and we will extract the first element from A. Not such a big deal here because it's just a symbolic F2, but we see that we have expressions later. And so what we can do is we can say F0 equals simplify F0. Okay, let's go ahead and display or tell the person at the command prompt what we're about to show. So this is the equation to interpolate F, and we could just do an F naught, and it would report our equations in terms of text looking stuff like this, but instead, let's use the pretty command. And what that'll do is it'll give us an ASCII art version of a more appropriately formatted equation. Now MATLAB does give you a way to convert symbolic equations to LaTeX that then you can draw to a graphics window. I'm not going to cover that here, but that's a great way to display your equations as well. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, the equation to interpolate F at the second point is just F2, and that makes sense. We already know the function value there, so it makes sense it would tell you just that value to do the interpolation. All right, I'm going to copy and paste this code it's almost exactly the same and now we're going to report the now the finite difference equation for first order derivative I won't bother typing derivative because that'll go off the screen that comes from the second element in a we'll call this f1 instead of f0 since that's the first order derivative, we can think of this as the zeroth order derivative or just interpolating the function. And we'll replace this with finite difference approximation of first order. And we're starting to go off the screen here. Uh, let's see if we can make this shorter somehow. Let's see, we'll call it finite difference. Approximation of first order derivative. Okay, that fits. And we'll do a pretty version of F1. And if we run this and we haven't made any mistakes, we should see our finite difference approximation. And we do. Now, the only sort of quirky thing is that, and maybe there's a way to fix this and I don't know it, but notice in the numerator it's F1 minus F3. But then there's a negative sign to the outside. I really wish this would just say F3 minus F1, but it doesn't. So as long as you're willing to put up with a little bit of quirkiness like that, uh, this works really well. So F3 minus F1 divided by 2H. And we know that is the finite difference approximation for the first order derivative. So we've confirmed that that works. All right. And now we're moving to the second order. We will call this F2. We will pull off the third element in A. Make sure to replace all the F1s with F2. And we'll just 
explain the second order, and that really should be all we need to do. Oh, we forgot one thing. Remember, and I do this all the time, we have to multiply by 2 for the second order derivative. We originally had an x squared in the polynomial, and when we differentiated twice, that 2 came to the outside. So don't forget that. And there is our finite difference approximation for the second order derivative. So very quickly, I will do one other finite difference just to show you how easily modified this is. Let's say we had four points and we want to evaluate our approximations, I don't know, at maybe at the midpoint between the first and second point. So right away in this F column vector, we know we'll need to give it an F4. And we'll declare an F4. And now we need four numbers for X. Okay. We want our zero to be at the midpoint between these two points. That would make our first point at minus H over 2. And our second point at positive H over 2. Then, of course, our third point will be positive 3 times H over 2. And the last point, positive 5 times h over 2. That places the zero between these two points and everything else should just work out. Let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. See how easy that is? And another little quirky thing with the MATLAB symbolic toolbox, uh, it did not put those under one denominator but not such a big deal for us. It did do it for our first order derivative, the finite difference approximation for the first order derivative, although it did the quirky thing and bring a negative sign to the outside that we have to remember to distribute in all the different terms. And then our finite difference approximation for the second order derivative. And it's important to remember not only the finite difference approximation, but where the points were located and where it's evaluating the function or one of its derivatives. So I hope this was helpful.